seven forged in fire scenes that amazed people. Hey there people, what's up? Welcome back to Filmvert. After the eighth season of History Channel's Forged in Fire premiered on 18th of November 2020, viewers can't help but enjoy all the new action the weapon forging competition introduced to them. With that in mind, a flashback from previous seasons of the series could be a treat for the fans. Here are seven forged in fire scenes that amazed people. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on anything. All right, let's get to it. Number seven, the Zweihander Sword. Extending up to 84 inches in length and weighing up to 3.2 kilograms, the German Zweihander is an enormous two-handed sword that was primarily used in the 16th century. When contestants Jay and Stefan were asked to forge this impeccable weapon, it was surely a nail-biting competition to watch. On top of the Zweihander intimidating appearance, the two men also had to include a guard, rakasso, pommel, and two lugs. That said, both Jay and Stefan delivered an impressive performance with forging two excellent weapons. While Stefan ended up forming a 200-layer Damascus blade that was 35 inches long, Jay eventually won by creating a much more impressive 5-foot blade with a hand-forged oak handle for extra strength. Number 6. Sika Sword This nail-biting battle between contestants Tony and Frank was probably one of the most memorable moments on the show. The two blacksmiths were given the task of recreating the Sika Sword, which was used in ancient Rome, originating from the Hallstatt culture. Forging the curved blade was equally tricky for both Frank and Tony. The judges were most impressed by Tony, whose sword featured three steels, a cable down the center, as well as a brass blade guard. Number 5. Knightly Poleaxe Featuring a carbon steel head affixed to an ash wood haft, the Knightly Poleaxe is based on a 15th century French original. The brutal and versatile Poleaxe was a favored weapon of the day and saw service with knights of all countries, both in tournament and on the battlefield. Thanks to its long shaft, knights could easily maintain a safe distance while striking the weapon through the opponent's armor, eventually slicing it through them as well. The two blacksmiths on the show, Derek and Carl, chose their own methods to forge the knightly poleaxe, but Derek was the winner in the end. He did what he was best at, trusting his gut and only using the traditional technique he was certain about, which eventually led him to receiving praise for creating a weapon that aced the strength test. Number 4. Rapier for those of you who don't know, a rapier is a kind of sword featuring a slender, sharply pointed two-edged blade that was quite popular in Western Europe, both for civilian use as well as a military weapon throughout the 16th and 17th centuries. Its main function was to stab and cut, which is why its blade has unique curves that distinguish this sword from the others. This explains why forging the rapier was a challenge, but contestant Dave left everyone stunned after making his own well-balanced sword out of a stainless steel blade and a mild steel pommel. Number 3. Makraka Sword Renowned as the close-range weapon of the Zande warrior, the Makraka is a long, sickle-shaped knife from Central Africa. While its blade widens near the tip with a cutting edge on the concave side of the blade, the handle is wooden, carved in hide to enhance the warrior's grip. The two feet long sword was used in executions as well as a secondary weapon in combat. During a forged and fire test, participants Paul and Craig had to recreate the weapon that they both explicitly called ugly. In the end, Craig was declared the winner despite facing numerous challenges during the forging process. Number 2. German Sawback Hunting Sword the dual-purpose 17th-century German sawback hunting sword remained the center of the viewer's attention when they watched the 23rd episode of Season 5. The deadly combination of a lethal short sword and a handsaw made this weapon particularly suitable for hunters who utilized it for more than one purpose. Devin and Trevor were the two blacksmiths competing against each other in this episode as each of them was given the task to recreate the 20-inch weapon with a sawback a pommel, and a right-side-bent forward clamshell. Devon's sword had an impressive handle, 
formed with a mixture of brass and bronze. However, unfortunately, he couldn't beat Trevor during the kill test after which Trevor was declared winner thanks to his 115-layer pre-steel Damascus sword. It's a 115-layer Damascus, three steels. Guard is Number 1. 17th Century Mortuary Sword With a spear tip point and a ferocious double-edged blade, the 17th Century Mortuary Sword was the major weapon used during the English Civil War. The two contestants, Kirk and Riley, were given five days to form their own versions of the mortuary sword that held historical significance as well since it's known to commemorate King Charles back in the day. Kirk stayed at the top of the game while recreating the sword with a backwards forging method. The 32-inch long blade allowed him to win the challenge after his version of the mortuary sword pierced through the pig carcass with zero turbulence. Thanks for watching these incredible forged in fire moments. The show remains popular among fans around the globe. This brings us to the end of our video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then let us know by liking the video. Stick around for more amazing content as we will soon be seeing you in another video. Until then, take care and goodbye.